So why should we not nuke Haiti? G give me one good reason why we should not drop a nuclear bomb on Haiti. Nicholas Joseph Fuentes, born August 18th, 1998. Nick Fuentes, for all y'all who don't know who he is, is basically the new breed, the young generation of the new white supremacists, nicknamed Baby Hitler. I don't like using the word anti-Semite, but if there was a picture next to who is anti-Semite, it is him. This man is constantly on the Jews' ass, preaching about them ruling the world and ruling the country, and just continuously coming at their neck. Not just the Jews, when he's not doing that and complaining about how they rule everything, and they're the reason that the white race is falling. He's taking shots at immigrants, but mostly he's taking shots at black people. What makes Nicholas J. Fuentes so different is he's not the cornball white supremacist. The man actually has some hip hop knowledge and that's where he gets goofy ass black people off guard because he can connect with them on that uh, superficial level. But if you really listen to the man, like I do. If you listen to what he says and what he's talking about. He's got some uh, bad ideas and some bad plans for the black race, namely in America and in the Americas in the future. This man is not your friend. This man is not our friend. And uh, he'll let you know it if you listen to him. In fact, let's go ahead and listen to some things he likes to say. It seems like no matter what the present state of black people is, wherever they are, whatever the history, whatever the variables, which are numerous, and of which there is great variety, no matter what, it's always white people's fault. Black people in the South, where slavery reigned for hundreds of years, white people's fault. Black people in the North, where slavery ended and where white people fought to free the slaves, white people blamed. In Haiti, a slave republic, the first of its kind, emancipated 200 years ago. They killed every white person, all of their white masters on the island. White people at fault. Black people in sub-Saharan Africa. Black people in French West Africa, who have equality with the French in the empire. White people at fault. Black people in the British colonies, in the German colonies, in the Portuguese colonies. White people at fault. Black people in London, in England. White people at fault. So, and by the way, black people in all these countries, in all these various conditions, are poor. Poor than white people more illiterate than white people, don't achieve the same educational level as white people, don't have the same income as white people, aren't employed at the same rate as white people, commit more crime than white people. It is true of all of them in all those places. In North America, in the Caribbean, in Europe, in Africa. So they're not doing well anywhere that they exist in the world. And yet, as I said, in spite of all of the numerous and varied variables in each of the circumstances of these different black populations, it's always white people's fault. Literally, no matter what. They're not thriving anywhere, but it's our fault everywhere. Now, you sit there and you listen to that damn devil. And he is a damn devil. And you know what? I'm not one to uh, run away from the truth. Some of the stuff that he says about us is true. Not all of it, because, you know, he's a liar. And that's where black people start to believe that they've never done anything, never created anything, didn't have a written language before the white man came. That is false. 
I'll get to that in a minute. But what he is right is what he is right about is black people are down bad wherever they are. Now, not just us. A lot of other people are down bad. A lot of Asians are down bad. A lot of Europeans are down bad. A lot of white people right here in America are down bad. West Virginia is a shithole. A few other states. Utah is a shithole. Okay. There's African nations that are way, way better than the state of West Virginia or Utah. But he's right. We have so much right underneath our feet. We have endless mineral wealth, oil, access to education right here in America, and we don't use it. We don't, we don't, we don't benefit from it. And why is that? And truly, it's because two things. Black people are unorganized, and a lot of black people are selfish. And one more thing, we don't want to get rid of these bad leaders. That's the reason black people are doing so bad is because they take five to two percent of their wealth and give it away to Europeans or Chinese. And they take that little bit and steal it while the rest of the public starves. I've seen it. That's the reason black people are down bad because they're foolish and they take peanuts for their resources. They make bad deals. And furthermore, they don't want to unite. The African Union is a joke. It's not real. He's correct about that. Our presidents, they're not real. Instead of black people uniting along the west coast of Africa, the east coast of Africa, the southern, they don't want to do it. So it's these little ass countries fighting big European powers and getting punked into signing these shitty ass deals for 2% for their gold mines. But there is no excuse. There is no excuse. Black people are doing bad. Now, what the man doesn't say is who has the highest level of PhDs by ethnicity in America? It's Nigerians. So why they want to say about our low IQs and whatever, that's a cultural issue that we don't focus on educations like the Africans. And of course, like I said, parts of Africa are selfish and they don't give back and they take stupid ass deals. That's why Nigeria looks terrible. But their people, if you put them up against the white Americans by ethnicity, they have a higher level of gaining PhDs. So that's a lie. They're inferior, but it means that they are not developed. They don't have the same level of development as the white people. That's pretty obvious. Everyone can see how that's obvious because 2,000 years ago, white people were Romans. They were building aqueducts and roads and swords and complex political and social institutions. And thousands of years before that, the Greeks were talking about the Demiurge and the hypostases and all and these kinds of things. Thousands of years before the Romans and 200 years ago, black people didn't even have a written language. There is no history from Africa because do you know what history is? It's events plus writing. They didn't have the writing. So we don't really even know what happened in Africa prior to the 19th century because missionaries had to go there in the last century and invent a written language for them. And that's when they began. He says we have no written language. That is a lie. We have the Meroetic script. That's Kushites, Sudan. We have a written language there. Aksum. The Ethiopians known today, geez, they have a written language, which they have their own Bible. And along West Africa, we used Arabic. So we just wrote in Arabic since the seven, eight hundreds. So we have a written language. That's a damn lie. What the man doesn't say or doesn't know, which a lot of you may not know, is Western and Northern Europeans do not have a written language. The English, the Germanics, the French, they have no written language. Show me the written language. I'm reading it right now. No, 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 no. If you're looking at what you're typing in right now, you're typing in Latin. That's the language of the Romans. We use the written language, the script of the Romans. The English have no written language. There is nothing written down anywhere before the Romans come into Western and Northern Europe. That's a fact. They don't have a written language. But you see how they use these lies. You see how this man lies. <laughs> it's that crazy. He doesn't, his people don't have a written language. 
but he accuses us of not having a written language. It's madness. So then you hear this devil start to talk about the Haitian migrants. Now, let's listen to the, some of the stuff that he said. 200 years ago, the Haitians overthrew the French colonial government, but it wasn't like a normal revolution. It wasn't like a normal revolution where, like our revolution, for example, where the founding fathers said, we want to be represented if we're going to be taxed. And we want a government of by and for the people. We want to govern ourselves. The proposition that all men are created equal. We, we pledge our blood and our treasure and our sacred honor. Like, that's, that's when white people do a revolution. That's when English people do a revolution. The Haitian Revolution started when 200 slaves got together at Bois Cayman, which is a forest in the mountainous north of Haiti, and a voodoo priest and a voodoo priestess slit the throat of a man, although some people say it was a black Creole pig, and smeared it over all their faces as a human or animal sacrifice to the great living spirit of the satanic voodoo religion. And then they initiated the revolution. When the revolution was finished, they went door to door and killed every white person on the island for being white. Literally killed every single one on the basis of their race. And then they congratulated themselves and said, we killed every white person on the island. That was the Haitian Revolution 200 years ago. First, he says Haiti is a failed state, yada, 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 because they, they killed their masters. I guess we should have just sat there and been enslaved and been in that torturous hell that was slavery to the Europeans, where our, our life expectancy was about three years in Haiti, three to seven years in Haiti, and 20 years in America. Yeah, that was a good life. I guess we shouldn't have killed our masters. But the thing, two things that he doesn't say about Haiti is, one, they built a lot after they threw off those Frenchmen. And they didn't just kill all the white people. That's a misconception about Haiti that they just killed all the white people. They killed the French people. The Haitians did not kill any Germans. They did not kill any of the Polish who were there working on the island. In fact, the Polish helped them overthrow the government, overthrow the French elite. See, they don't want to talk about that. And after the Haitians killed those terrible French terrorists, they built beautiful things on the island. They built the Citadel, the largest man-made structure in the Western Hemisphere, in the Americas, on top of a mountain. Still stands to this day. Could not be conquered by the French, the Spanish, or the English. They came for it, but they all failed. There was a beautiful palace for events. There was a lot of stuff built all over Haiti. But the, the mistake that the Haitians made, and we're still making to this day, is they were never truly united. There was a bit of mistreatment from the higher ups. And lastly, they thought that they could be accepted by French people, by white people. They thought that they could just make bygones be bygones and they could just be cool with Europeans. That was the biggest mistake. Non, it's on after what y'all did. Even still to this day, 200 years later, these white people still still want to punish the Haitians for getting free from the worst slavery known to mankind. We're going to get into that in one sec. Delivering them. It's a delivery service. Haitian delivery. They're going to pick them up and bring them to your front door so they can eat your kids, so they can break in your house and rape you and eat your balls and kill you. Because God forbid we bring them back to Haiti. And this is all our fault. So why should we not nuke Haiti? G give me one good reason why we should not drop a nuclear bomb on Haiti. Because Haitians, when they encounter white people, kill all of them. 
We're talking about letting them into America. We're talking about picking them up and delivering them into America. Presumably so that they can murder us for wrecking the country that they've ruled for 200 years after they killed all their white colonial masters. Why should we not kill all of them now? We have a way of life where people can be clean and be manicured and can be refined and can be thoughtful and sensitive and intellectual and compassionate and loving. But if we need to protect that, you need to get in the mech suit and get your fucking laser rifle and shoot down a thousand Haitian refugee boats. Now this devil, he slipped up and said some more stuff here. Ah. First off, he says nuke the island for us getting free. He wants, he's, not, he's not joking about that. There is some humor to the man. He is humorous. But listen to the truth in it. For them people, for their ancestors, getting freedom, defying the white man's rule, they should get death. Their descendants should get death death and they should be wiped from the face of the earth that man's not playing any of you niggas if y'all really talking about freedom us getting free us getting power from america to south africa all the way around remember if you go for power these boys already dropped two atomic bombs and they supposedly actually like the japanese what the fuck you think they're gonna do to you these people are serious and if you go for power they will not only punish you, they will punish your children's children's children. There ain't no turning back when you're actually going to power. So it's either power or it's nothing. Another thing he slips up and says, he's joking around. He says, hop in the mech suit and gun down some Haitians. Now listen to that. He's humorous again, but he's slipping up here. The mech suit. Robots. Giant robots with huge Gatling guns on them. I mean, you really don't think some of these white supremacists who ain't part of the government have this shit? You think they ain't got missile launchers and all types of stuff? They have serious high tech. People in the army have this man's mindset and they get it out. People who are engineers and aerospace scientists have this man's mindset and they are developing shit to kill your black ass. Why you niggas out here protesting all this dumb shit and, 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 and going to college to be an English major? These people aren't playing around. Hop in a robot and kill all you. Don't give a fuck about the government. We the new government. We got all types of tech. Missiles, Gundam wings, and we ready to kill a whole bunch of fucking black people that don't want to do what we say. They're serious about that shit. And that's why we got to be serious, too, about this STEM shit, about this technology. It has to be part of our culture. But that's another talk. So this is a pretty terrifying prospect. And the only way to protect our very high level of civilization is to become barbarians again. That's the only way. In order to protect our very delicate way of life, we have to get very tough. That's it. So, anyway, so that's the story about Haiti. It's a satanic country founded on race hatred and uh, devil worship. They literally sacrificed an animal or a human being for their revolution and painted their faces with blood and then killed all the white people. Their descendants are cannibals that eat people. And now they all want to come here. I don't think so. I think they should all be turned away with lethal force. Something tells me, though, that's not going to happen. I think it was two, maybe three weeks ago, end of February, I said that I was talking, though, about Africa. I said people aren't ready because by the end of this century, there's going to be 10 billion Africans in the world because their birth rate is so high. And inevitably, they're going to have to go here. We're going to experience catastrophic population decline, as will most of the world's countries, by the end of the century. 
And just as we brought in Hispanic immigrants at one time to account for the deficit, and now it's Asian immigrants in the past five or 10 years, in the future, it will be Africans. Mark my words. I said, and these people are not civilized. They eat each other. They cook their food in oil, industrial oil that they extract from electrical transformers, which is real, by the way. They literally do that. They're subliterate, not even illiterate, subliterate. They're a pre-literate civilization or lack thereof. And I said, they're all going to come here and they're going to be chasing you through the street. I said, and you'll pine for the days when the worst that you could expect is to get mugged or carjacked or burglarized by these American blacks. And then there's something that he slipped up and told us. He slipped up. What's he say? Gone are the days when you are African Americans will just beat you and rob you. These Africans, which are Haitians, these Africans, they're going to eat you alive. They're going to eat you alive. They're far worse. We got to keep them away. We got to keep them away. See, now that's the thing. These sons of bitches are so sick, so obsessed with us, with the American African. <clears throat> they want our souls. They want us to entertain them. They want us to, to, to make music for them. And truth be told, they actually love us. But see, we forgot our position. We're not going to be this white man's hound dog. And that's the problem. That's the problem. So they got a, we got another spanking coming our way. They're about to jail a lot of black people in America. And they're going to get us in check. But you see, they don't want to exterminate us like the Haitians. See, the Haitians, they want for that freedom. They want for power. The American African, we just wanted to be friends. We want to integrate and be friends. So what is the man saying here? He's saying we have to keep the Haitians away from the American Africans. Why must we keep the Haitians away from the American Africans? Why? Because if you get that American African creativity, that do for self, that loud mouth Muhammad Ali, if you get that and you mix that with the Haitian spirit of independence, Vadoon, if you get that independent mind that we're going to be independent all the way around, if you throw all that white man shit back at him, his religion, his society, everything, and you say, we want to be independent, holy shit, we might just do it. We might just do it. Can we do it right now? No. Could we have done it in 1930, 1940, 1950? Yeah, we should have listened to Malcolm. We just didn't have the spirit. We wanted to be friends. But if these two mix, if the black American gets that Haitian spirit, that mindset, man, we in for it. So what do we got to do? We got to keep them away. And we got to kill all the Haitians. He slipped up on that one. This is someone you need to know. This is someone you need to listen to. He pushes a lot of their uh, neo-white supremacist ideology. And you need to know how your enemy thinks. The funny thing about it is, you always get these people that aren't fully white that are the most racist. Nick is about one-fourth Mexican. He's Italian, Mexican, and Irish. He's not even fully, fully white. I mean, the man's white to us. He can make a blonde-haired, blue-eyed baby, but his blood isn't clean. And those are the people you have to watch out for most of all. Always remember that. The man isn't even fully white, espousing so much white supremacist views. But hey, that's them. And lastly, let me just end with this. So you know this enemy. As I said, the man has hip-hop knowledge, and he's cool with Kanye West. So you got to watch our enemy here. Our enemy copies us. 
He wants to be us. He even wants to watch us have sex with his wife. But this man, this white supremacist, hates us. Never forget that. He wants us to remain at the bottom. We can't even have any type of equality. The man will sit up there and say, you know, we don't deserve, white, black people don't deserve shit, but we should be, give them a, a fair legal system and education. And de- that's damn near what we're asking for in reparations. They want to keep us down. They will love you. As long as you are down, they will copy you. But at the end of the day, when you go for power, if you ever make that mistake and we actually go for power, remember, this man and anyone like him will want to drop a fucking nuke on us. Never forget that. Know your enemy. One.